Hello and welcome to Thin Blue Line Radio, our Through the Decades episode for January. Today's episode, we're going to focus on the story of PC Albert Willits from Wolverhampton Borough Police. I'm JP. And I'm Dave. So let's get straight into that story right now. So the story of Albert Willits started on Sunday, January the 18th, 1925. Started with three youths that were inmates at the St. Vincent de St. Paul's Hostel for Boys at Leighton Green, which was a Roman Catholic probation hostel. These three kids had been on their way to confession when they had made the decision to abscond from the probation service and go burgling. They took their trusty revolver with them, which they thought would be useful, and vanished into the estates. After they've obviously done one they've managed to they've managed to move away from get away from where they were who they was with um basically the travels have fetched them to wolverhampton particularly an area southeast of the town well the the center of wolverhampton it's just a little bit southeast on a, a place called vicarage road near to bilston street police station they'd apparently been stopped a few times by police but um, gave the story that they were heading for Stafford and were allowed on their way uh, before they landed in Vicarage Road at around 6.40 in the morning. So, Constable Willits is obviously east. I think he started duty at 6 o'clock that morning and around not long after that, because obviously I know that things would have been a little bit differently, he's come on duty um, and he's thought, right, I'll get on my feet and I'll get out there. He's co- where Bilston Street Police Station, where it is now, that's a brand new one. Um, a brand new police station but it's a little bit further over on a, a street called Cleveland Street and there's this uh, like a little bit of a car park at, like it's a it's a v-shaped car park at the end of an old set of terraces in front of a lot of new builds where back then would have been the local uh, memorial hospital um, and he's walked down Cleveland Street and then with the police station behind him he's turned left onto Vicarage Road um, which roughly is, I say, 6.40 when these uh, three uh, offenders have been there. So that's when he's noticed them and he's thought, oh, let's go and have a little bit of a chat, because rightly so he's thinking, three young lads. Yeah, I mean, 14, 17, 19, 19, out at 6.40 in the morning. Yeah. I think I'd be thinking, why are you out at 6.40 Why are you out? Exactly. So he's obviously gone, I'm going to go and have a chat with these guys. Mm. So about... 30, 40 metres past the junction of Vicarage Road and Powlett Street, just on your right would have been a church that the Vicarage served, um, and this is where he's approached uh, the three the three young lads to have a chat with them. Now, this part of the incident, there's, there's obviously this is from 1925, so the information is limited and slightly different depending on where you look. One of the sources we've got basically says that he's he's found this He's found their behaviour suspicious, approached them, and then literally three shots have rang out. Um, one of them has grazed him to the temple, and the fatal shot has been to the back of his head. However, the official police memorial page states that one of the youths has knocked his helmet off his head, he has pursued him in a foot chase, and an- another of the youths has shot him to the back, which then resulted in him passing later at hospital and i think it was obviously because it's not that far from the nick Mm. um as i think colleagues have come to his aid because i think obviously the hospital the police station all in close proximity um and i think people have come to uh, albert's aid uh, and literally picked him up and walked him quite literally across the street into the hospital but unfortunately, as you say, is uh, it was uh, the gunshots were fatal, um, or the gunshot was fatal, uh, and Albert passed away. After this, as you can imagine, like we've discussed many times before, a lot of things will kick into place because then, I mean, back then it would have been wholly different because we're talking about what was it, eighteen hundred to nineteen slash twentieth century, mm. uh, you know, at nineteen twenty five twentieth century cop. So you're looking at the type of kit, no radio would have been the sergeant had the staff, the whistles and things like that. So the manhunt 
as yeah. then ensued. And to be fair, everything is different because the whole law that we're governed by now was only 1985. Yeah. So back then, there was still, was it SOS law? That you yeah. could just lock someone up for being suspicious. So everything, literally everything about his job is different to what mm-hmm. we see today. So I don't know what the stop search powers back then, but whether he's he stopped them for a, a little stop search or whether he's just thought, you know what, <coughs> SOS law, you're all coming in, we're going to lock you all up. Nowadays, if you have one Bobby going for three offenders, he's asking for backup before he gets anywhere near. Yeah. Especially when he's so close to the neck. But again, thinking Albert has more probably approached these three young lads going, oh, they're obviously up to no good. Yeah. Are they, are they trying to rob stuff or what? Not imagining that one of them would produce a revolver and murder him in cold blood in the street. So he's approached mm-hmm. them thinking, let's clip these round the ear and say, get back home and go get back in bed, whatever. Tell mm-hmm. your mams that you, the local coppers clip you round the ear and sent you home because... That's what they did back then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you get a clip round the ear off your mam for... Because back then they used... They, back then they'd know the local bobbies as well because mm-hmm. that's something to, to bear in mind that Albert would most probably pounded them beats for a while. He did, people yeah. would have known him. And then... Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there's uh, a massive manhunt, and my, I believe that he was caught later that afternoon, wasn't it, Dave? Was it, was it tea time that afternoon? Yeah, I don't think they went... I don't think they gone, went on the run for very long. However, the bit I have seen is that the gun was never found. Yeah. So they had enough time to discard the gun in a very good hiding place because that's never been found. But, yeah, I believe it was later the afternoon into the evening. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, the I think they did get the was it they was charged with it and they was found guilty um, and they was the conviction was they sentenced to death they were sentenced to be hanged which I believe is partly because they decided to take the defence of both of them blaming each other but admitting that they were there. So they've one, just come like you both involved, so murder, murder. Yeah, because that's what the, the courts have looked at, haven't it? Because I think one of them said, oh, yeah, I shot one that it missed. Yeah. The greys of the temple. Yeah. But then he's turned around and gone, but he's the one that fired that shot. But the other one's gone, oh, hang on a minute, you fired them all. Yeah. But then it, it's a bit of a quandary, isn't it? Because if he's got the gun already and fired, it all runs back to how quick were the shots. Mm-hmm. Because then did he have time to give the gun to someone to fight to then him hand it back to someone to fight? Yeah. Or were they just three? But like you say, they're all present. Yeah, present. So they've had all... Uh, yeah, they've been done for murder and sentenced to be hanged. Now, petitions um, for them to be reprieved uh, from the death sentence were lifted by the Home Secretary on April the 1st, less than a week before the pair were due to be hung we say per because i believe the, the third fought. one was 14 and he was used as a prosecution yeah. witness so there's only two of them that were actually held because one of them the third one i believe ended up being sent to a workhouse mm-hmm. and uh, i believe he died quite young uh, following that but the murder charges were only for the 17 and the 19 um and uh, obviously they've I think there was one of them was given, or they say they, there was the seventeen and the nineteen year old. The seventeen year old was given a new identity and was shifted off to Liverpool, yes. where the the, uh, the 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 research that we've done mentions that he vanishes from history. So we're assuming he doesn't come across the police anymore. He just cracks on, yeah, lives his life. Because the nineteen year old does appear to have been given a new name, but shortly after was arrested for several other offences. So clearly it is a time where, because I don't know what fingerprints and DNA was like back then. So clearly it is still a time where they can say, well, I know you've got a new name, but we still know you're this person. So he's still come up in records as that suspect has been arrested following, even under his new name. Mm -hmm. Um, And as I say, Dorothy, uh, Albert Willett's wife and his uh, his baby, uh, baby boy, Derek, are obviously left with the horrific living a new life or I getting he was, was he 10 months at the time yeah Albert I, so. I was going to say nine months nine ten month yeah yeah but yeah they've they've then got to get used to their new normal mm. uh without dad being there i know that um dorothy remarried 
uh, and had children. Um, um, but yeah, it's just you, th you think to yourself, you, you a simple thing of going on duty at six o'clock, little 40 minutes later, you think, right, I've got all my ducks in a row. I'm going to start going out or go on the beat. You go on the beat and three youths, it's yeah. the best way to describe it. All right, there's a 19 year old, but basically children. Yeah, of got a revolver and uh, shot a copper in the back of the head or in in the back yeah um not to go home to his uh, his missus lay, lay dead in the street now where the incident happened uh, on vicarage road as i say i think it's uh, it's not that far past as i say 30 40 meters past the junction of powlett street uh, and as you look at the uh the, there's a sort of like um new builds across if you go a little bit further past where the new builds were, the, uh, the terraced houses start, uh, you'll see a home that's got like a little bit of a front garden uh, set back, sort of like a double fronted garden um, with a driveway just to the side with uh, big metal gates on. That is the actual vicarage and that stood there that day. That When you look at the, the pictures showing where Albert lay in the street as well as a yeah. couple of marks on a wall, uh, the actual wall that apparently could possibly still hold the bullet, the bullet marks from one of those shots that missed, uh, is could actually still be on the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, the only sad thing about it is that there's nothing at scene that marks what a horrible, tragic event happened there. No, and I believe it was only in, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's only in the 90s that they actually put up a plaque for him. At yeah. one of the local police stations. 92. But nothing at the actual scene of the incident other than potential bullet marks. Yeah. And quite fitting, it was put at the Bilston Street police station, but the brand newly built Bilston Street, which is about 250 yards away from the old Bilston Street, a brand mm. new modern police station. And that's, uh, and the, the family was invited down there, um, uh, was invited down there to where. Uh, to, for the service uh, so that they put a gold plaque that reads dedicated to the memory of police constable albert willits wolverhampton borough police killed on duty in vicarage road wolverhampton on the 18th of january 1925 aged 24 years 24 that's nothing yeah. unveiled in 1992 um derek and other family members were invited um, to the unveiling of the plaque at the Wolverhampton's new police station. Shortly after the murder was um, PC Albert Willett's funeral, uh, which I believe was a massive affair. Thousands lined the street and watched um, as it left the Willett's home, made its way to St. Peter's Church before moving on to the cemetery. Um, unfortunately, his widow Dorothy was not able to attend, um, according to son Derek because he has grown up and given a few interviews following the, the traumatic events. Um, and he said that mum was just not up for it. Um, so she has sent his uncle, Uncle Bill, um, who attended on her behalf. And it's, this seems to be a, a little bit of a cycle, a little bit of a regular thing when when officers are killed in the line of duty in the way that some of these that we've discussed on the podcast there is and I've, I, I, I suppose it's a word that i'm used to saying an outpouring of grief the community yeah. genuinely grieve with not only the the for the the loss of the officer but it's the grief for the family they see the families that's left yeah. behind and stuff like that so they did set up a trust for fund in his death didn't they which yeah. then i think derek was able to take full advantage of as well as derek's like uh, kids yeah um but i mean when doing the research for this because obviously we've we've just glanced upon his widow dorothy did not attend but when you're doing the research for what happened on this the vast majority of what you seem to get is all history of what dorothy then went through and the ptsd and trauma that she then yeah. had as a result of this horrific incident so it isn't likely that we say oh yeah his missus didn't attend it's she was clearly really struggling yeah. and could not face up the face everything that had happened being laid out in front of her mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously as uh, as Albert is lay um, he's he was lay with 
um, he was laying a grave at Merrydale Cemetery. Now, I know that Dorothy did go on to remarry and have children, but one thing that we do know, which I thought was, um, I suppose it, it just goes to show that obviously Albert was, you know, a first a first love, so to speak, and she, when she passed away, she was actually buried with, uh, with, with Albert in the grave in Merrydale Cemetery. Um, and that grave is there. I know that Derek, the son, died uh, a few years ago now. Um, and I just hope that there's someone down near Merrydale Cemetery who can look after the gravestone. And who knows, uh, Thin Blue Line Radio might be able to uh, lay one of our TBLR reefs. Um, I believe that the gravestone is not actually that old. Because one thing I read was that at some point it's been vandalised and destroyed and kicked over. And as a result of one of the police charities who, forgive me, escapes me at the moment, but it was replaced not too long ago after yeah. Dorothy's passing. So it was the graves on that had both on them that was vandalised and then replaced. But yeah, like I say, hopefully it's being looked after and yeah. um, cared for. That's very positive. Tom, we're just going to add something very briefly on the end of that, if you can, go on, Dave. So after that, the uh, gravestone was replaced following the vandalising. Um, the cost of the replacement was shared between the Police Federation and Derek himself. So Albert joined Wolverhampton Police in July of 1921, following on from his father, who served as a policeman also. Dorothy was uh, a seamstress, but they had, uh, they had Derek um, was their only child. We do know that... Uh, Dorothy, after uh, the tragic m uh, murder of Albert, moved on to someone called Mick Vic Mountford, and he had uh, more children, uh, uh, of which seems to be seems to be prevalent in the children's minds of how much Mum was struggling with mental health as a result of that tragic event from 1925. Albert's son Derek uh, obviously was 10 months old at the time of uh, of Albert's death. Uh, he, of course, has no memory of father, but he's he's managed to speak to family members and, and has had a pursuit of knowledge to find out what, more about his dad. Um, he was then, upon growing up, joined the Royal Navy, served with this distinction in the Second World War, taking part in Sicily landings, Salerno landings, um, served on a tank landing craft during the Normandy invasion and supported the Americans on Omaha Beach a day or two after D-Day. Mm -hmm. So he's had quite a distinctive um, career with the Royal Navy, ending up as a sub-lieutenant. Excellent. So, um, yes, yeah. yeah. Thank you to everyone for listening. Please remember, you know, we, we do this to try and make sure that people are aware of the history of the police and the officers and, and the sacrifices that people have paid to keep everyone safe. So please like, share, all the social media stuff that you, you can do to help support us is greatly appreciated. Um, and thank you for listening and thank you uh, for allowing us to do this. Yeah, more importantly, thanks to Derek. Uh, I know that Derek passed away several years ago. Rest in peace, Derek, but uh, uh, and, uh, certainly a well done uh, for your passionate pursuit and the remembrance of your father. And lastly, but by no means least, uh, a very special thank you to PC Albert Willett for your ultimate sacrifice. Always remembered, never forgotten.